Welcome to Science of Foods and Forces. Easy Science with Alfred. For ages 8 and up. Food is that which we eat to get energy. Where does my energy come from? Why do I breathe, drink, and eat? Welcome to Air, Water, and Food video book. Breathe, drink, and eat. The teacher sees lots of wasted food at the school lunchroom. He and the student's parents come up with a plan. The next morning, the students get ready for school. They are surprised at breakfast. Hey, why is there no food on my plate? There is no food on the whole table too? You will find out at school. With empty tummies, the children go to school. The teacher welcomes the students to class. Teacher takes a deep, loud breath. He inhales and exhales again and again. Students ask, What are you doing? I am breathing, replies teacher. He then asks, Why do we breathe? The children are quiet. They think about the question as they breathe in and out themselves. Well, let's see who can hold their breath the longest time, said the teacher. Some don't breathe for 30 seconds, others a minute. The winner holds a bit longer. We breathe to get air into our lungs. Later, we will talk about why we need air. May I get a drink? I'm thirsty. Wait a minute, please. Why do we drink water? Says the teacher. Because we are thirsty! Answers the class. Yes, but why are we thirsty? A clever student answers. Because my body needs water. Right. We will find out more about this later. Said the teacher. Teacher hands an empty cup to each student. People can't drink most of the water on earth because it is too salty or too dirty. In fact, we can drink less than 2% of all the water on the earth. 2% is 2 pennies out of 100. Not very much. The students all get a drink of clear, cool water. <sighs> the students say that clean water is special and should not be wasted. Teacher agrees. Soon, the students' stomachs start making rumbling sounds. We are hungry! Said the students. Before, the teacher talks. The students say, We know what you're going to ask next. Why do we eat? Because we're hungry! Answers the excited class. Excellent answer! Said the teacher. And why do we need food? Food has vitamins that help us grow. Right, food is our fuel too, said the teacher. Let's understand why we need air, water, and food. Let's put all these puzzle pieces together. We breathe to get air into our lungs. Oxygen in the air enters our bloodstream. In fact, it is oxygen mixed with iron that makes our blood red. When we eat, food goes down our stomach. The stomach breaks down food into tiny bits. This is called digestion. The very tiny food bits go into our blood. The heart pumps our blood throughout our body. Blood takes air and food bits to every cell. Cells burn the tiny bits of food and oxygen to make energy. Water is the liquid that helps all this flow around the body. Wow! Said the students. Who is hungry and thirsty? Asks the teacher. We all are! Answered the students. The hungry students eat their lunches all up. A student raises his hand. Teacher, it was a very interesting day. I just want to say that I'm thankful for air, water, and food. Me too! Says everyone else. Why does food spoil? What can we do about it? Welcome 
to Good Food Goes Bad video book. Ways to keep food from spoiling with Funky Fairy. Wu cleans the kitchen. He sees some spoiled food. Wu wonders, why does good food go bad? Suddenly, Funky Fairy appears. I can help answer that. Funky explains. See the spoiled bread? Mold grows on it. Mold is a fungus. So are mushrooms. Fungus grows in moist places. Wu smiles. That is why there is no mold on this dry toast. Yes, says Funky. Do you know that yeast fungus makes bread dough fluffy? Baking kills the yeast. Wu looks at a near empty milk container. What makes this milk taste sour and smell bad? Funky said, watch out, don't drink it, it will make you sick. To understand what makes good milk go bad, let's go on a little trip. Funky waves her magic wand. Funky points. See that green pond scum? It is a tiny life form called bacteria. Funky teaches, there are many kinds of bacteria. They are all around us. Bacteria are so small that it takes special microscopes for us to see bacteria. With another wave of her wand, they are back in the kitchen. Over time, bacteria in the milk grows and turns the milk sour. Wu asks, Is there something we can do to keep milk from going bad? Funky replies, Yes! After milk comes from the cow, the milk is heated to kill bacteria. Next, we keep milk in the fridge to slow down bacteria. The sell-by date tells us how long the milk is good to drink. Some bacteria make us sick, like sore throats and other earaches. Other bacteria are helpful. Good bacteria also turn milk into yogurt and cheese. Sided Wu points to the rotten fruit and vegetables. What happened here? Did fungus and bacteria spoil them? Funky replies. Let's see. We cut these fresh apples and bananas. Eat a few and put the rest on this plate. Fungi waves her magic wand. Suddenly, it is several hours later. Wu sees how the fruit pieces turn brown. Funky explains, air changed the chemicals in the food. Funky said, over time, air, fungus, and bacteria spoil the fruit and vegetable. Putting food in the fridge keeps it fresher for longer. Funky explains, it is important to keep food clean too. This reduces fungus and bacteria. Also, food crumbs attract insects and animals. They spoil food too. Wu asks, How do we keep good food from going bad and spoiling? With a flash, Funky and Wu are in the kitchen of a restaurant. Funky teaches everyone needs to keep food clean. This keeps us and customers from getting sick and spoiled food. Here are some tips on how to keep good food from spoiling. Clean, can, cover, cool and cold, cook, close. Let's look at this grocery store. Funky points out that some food is in cans. Food is canned to keep air out. Canned food lasts longer. The cool and cold temperature keep the food fresh. It prevents fungus and bacteria from spoiling the food. Cooking helps preserve food by killing fungus and bacteria. Wu notices how many food, such as his favorite cookies, are covered. Covering food keeps the air out. Wu walks down the cereal aisle and sees that the packages are closed. The closed cereal boxes keep the cereal dry and air out too. Yes, Funky agrees. Also, spices like salt and chili powder help preserve the food too. Wu said, so hot countries like Mexico, India, and Thailand have spicy food to keep the food from spoiling. Funky and Wu return to the home kitchen. They wash their hands and cook dinner for Wu's family. Wu talks about the ways to keep food fresh. To close, Funky reminds us these words are ways to keep food from spoiling. Clean, can, cool and cold, cook, cover, and close. With a wand wave, Funky Fairy is gone. Wu smiles. I am sure glad that there are so many ways to keep good food from going bad. Nature has networks. Why do I care about plants? Welcome to No Plants, No Food. 
In the classroom, plants are all around us. What if there are no plants? Teacher asks. Students answer. There, there would be, be no green grass, grass no, no flowers, no, no trees. trees. Good answer, said teacher. Also, it is a fact. Plants make food. The students look puzzled. Tonight, do your homework. Tomorrow, come hungry to school. That night, students search the internet about where foods come from. The next morning, the students don't eat at home. They come hungry to school. Students and parents put food on the tables. This, this smells good! good! Say the students. Teacher said, Before we eat, let's see which foods are made by plants. Next, teacher has a surprise. Okay, please take away all the food made by plants. The students look at the table with plant products removed. A hungry student sadly said, Well, at least we can still eat milk, eggs, and meat. Not so fast, said the teacher. Students say, Huh? Teacher asks, What do animals eat? The surprised students say, Oh my! Animals can eat plants! Oh no! Said the students. Parents take away the milk, meat, eggs, just spices, sauces, and water are left on the table. Teacher says, Pepper and these sauces come from plants. He takes them off the table. He adds, Salt can stay. It is a mineral. Water stays too. Later, we will see more about water and plants. Teacher asks, What if there are no plants? Students say, Wow! There will be no food and no animals too! Teacher asks, Who wants us to bring back all food that comes from plants? The hungry students all say, Yes, please! please. Parents bring back all the food. Hooray! Say the students. As they eat, the students think about how food comes from plants. After they eat, teacher asks, What do plants need to live? Sunshine, said the student. Yes, and what else? Asked teacher. Dirt, said another student. Teacher said, Yes, but not just any dirt. Plants need soil. Soil has vitamins and minerals that plants need to grow. What else? As teacher. As the class thinks, teacher pulls something out of his pocket. What is this? A bee! Say the students. Yes! Said teacher. Beans are also seeds. Let's see how seeds grow in eight steps. One. Start with soil rich with vitamins. Two. Plant the seed. 3. Water the thirsty seeds. 4. Add sunshine. 5. Grow the plants. Vitamins in the soil mix with water. Roots drink water that is mixed with vitamins and minerals. Leaves catch the sun's energy. So, plants are sun or solar powered. 6. Later, plants get flowers. 7. Pollinate flowers. Inside flowers are pollen cells. Bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds all help move pollen between flowers. The pollinated flowers change into fruits and vegetables. Yeah! Plants make food! Inside are seeds. When the seeds grow, they start the food cycle all over again. Wow! Amazing! Seeds grow into plants that make food! Say the students. Remember that animals eat plants too, said a student. Teacher replies, The main point is people eat plants and animals too. Teacher points out, This is the food web. It connects our planet to plants and people. To close, Seeds with soil and sun become plants. They make food that animals and us eat. Simply said, no plants, no people. When we take care of our earth, we care for the plants that make our food too. 
Awesome! At the center of Earth life is a circle of sun, soil, seeds, and plants. Functions are useful actions. They make our clothes, move our money, and explain our objects. From fibers to fabrics, what actions turn cotton into clothes? Welcome to Science of Clothes! Where do clothes come from? How are clothes colored? Let's see the 7 easy steps. 1. Twist fibers. We start with fibers. Line up all the short fibers in the same direction. Next, twist the short fibers together to make long, strong threads. Fibers come from plants and animals. Cotton and flax grow on plants. Money is made from cotton and flax fibers. Sheep make wool. Silk comes from caterpillar cocoons. People also mix chemicals to make fibers like polyester. Next, we want color. 2. Color threads Color is bounced light. White light is actually a rainbow of colors. Most of the colors are absorbed. We see the color that bounces back to our eyes. So what are dyes? Dyes are chemicals that change the chemistry of cloth so different light waves are absorbed and reflected. Next, need to connect threads. 3. Weave cloth. Three different threads are loaded in a loom. Two threads go through tiny rings. Every other thread is lifted up. This makes a space for the third thread to go across. Next, the other threads are lifted up. The third thread goes across again. The over and under threads keep cloth from coming apart. 4. Weave Patterns Threads with different colors are loaded in the loom. Sometimes, computers control which threads are lifted when. Also, what color thread goes across when. The result weaves colorful patterns. There are more ways to add colors to cloth. 5. Color Cloth Here are two ways to add color to white cloth. A flat screen has a pattern of closed and open parts. The colored dye flows through the open parts and onto the cloth. Other screens add color to different places to make patterns. The most popular way to add colors to cloth is roller print. They work with the same idea as the flat screen, just round and much faster. Next, we need to shape the cloth. 6. Cut and sew clothes First, sharp wedge shapes blades cut layers of cloth into different shaped pieces. Sew the pieces together with two threads. One thread in a needle comes down and makes a loop. The second thread goes through the loop to make a stitch. Stitches hold clothes together. 7. More kinds and colors of clothes Socks are made by loops of threads. Felt is made by smashing and gluing fibers together. Colors are screen printed onto shirts. T-shirt can also be tied and dyed into tie-dye patterns. To close on clothes, we twist fibers into threads. We weave threads into cloth. Sometimes, we weave patterns with colored thread. Often, rollers print patterns onto cloth. Look at the labels to see what clothes are made of. Guess at how clothes are made. Think about adding the colorful patterns. Today, we are lucky to have so many kinds of colors of clothes. What are the four math actions?
passions that make money move. Welcome to Money Math with Funky Fairy. My money moves with math. Funky Fairy likes math. She helps others learn math too. One day at a store, Funky Fairy hears a yell. Help! These numbers don't make sense. I don't know how big my bill is. Funky replies, that's easy. She reaches into her magic bag and pulls out a plus sign. Funky said, just use this plus sign to add your bill. Adding makes a number bigger. It tells you the total cost of what you buy. 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 7. Wow, thanks! This plus sign sure is handy. I will use add all the time. Just then, at the next aisle over, Funky hears another cry for help. Funky quickly flies over and asks, May I help? The man replies, How much should my change be? Oh, that's easy, said Funky. She reaches in her magic bag and pulls out a take away sign. Funky says, How much you pay, take away your bill, equals your change. 10 minus 7 equals 3. The man asks, How do you do that? Funky replies, We use take away, that is also called subtract. It makes the number smaller. Here is an example 5 minus 2 equals 3. Hey! I just noticed that add and take away are opposites. Yes, 3 plus 2 equals 5. Funky replies, back to your bill. 10 take away 7 is 3. The man smiles. So my change is 3. Wonderful. I will use take away all the time. Just then, a co-worker asks, help. Funky quickly flies over and asks. May I help you? The worker replies, How do I know how much money I make? Funky said, Oh, that's easy. She takes the tied side out of her magic bag. Funky asks the worker a couple of questions. How many hours did you work? The worker answers, 40. How much do you make? $10 per hour. Funky smiles and said, 40 times 10 is 400. The worker asks, How did you do that? Funky said, it is easy with times. Times is also called multiply. Multiply makes the number bigger. For example, column times row. 5 times 2 equals 10. Funky said, to make them easier to learn, we put times numbers in a table. The worker said, I will learn the times table now. Next time, I will be able to multiply by myself. Just then, there is a call for help from across the counter. A child asks, I have five dollars. How do I know how many cookies I can buy? They cost 50 cents each. I want to share with my friends. Funky said, that is easy. She grabs a right side from her magic bag. Funky said, the answer is 10. The child asks, how do you do that? Funky replies, five dollars is 500 cents. So each cookie costs 50 cents. So, 500 divided by 50 is 10. He said thanks and hands her a cookie. Funky takes a bite and laughs. Divide is also finding out how many parts are in a whole. For example, there are 8 pieces in this whole pie. Each piece is 1 8. Funky continues. Divide also asks how many of a number are in total. For example, how many 5s are in 20? The answer is 4. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. Divide makes a number smaller. The child replies, Hey, I know that divide is the opposite of times. Funky agrees. 5 times 4 is 20. The child replies, And 20 divided by 4 is 5. The people at the store clap and clap. They say, Hooray for math! Hooray for plus, take away, times, and divide. Math also! Funky Fairy smiles. What an amazing day! We added bills, subtracted change, multiplied the paycheck, and divided pie. Money math is useful, and it tastes good too. How do points and lines become shapes all around me? Why does shape math matter to me? Nature forces are actions that affect the natural world around us. 
does life live in a dry desert? How can nature change a swimming tadpole into a hopping frog? Welcome to Tad's Tale Video Book. Life Changes. Tad uses her tail to break out of the egg sac. She looks around. The pond looks so big. Quickly, Tad swims behind a plant. She doesn't want to be eaten. Tad eats plants and insects. Over time, she grows and grows. Tad's tail is great for swimming. She likes to swim around the pond. Tad goes to eat her favorite algae. Suddenly, a water bug pushes her out of the way. The water bug eats up the yummy algae. Tad's tummy rumbles. She looks outside the pond. She sees the land and air above and lots of food. Tad finds another plant to eat. The pond seems smaller. Tad feels different. She finds it harder to swim. One day, as Tad swims around the pond, she sees something. Tad notices her tail is getting smaller. What is happening with her shape too? She asks Dad. Dad teaches that the pond is the same size. It is Tad who is growing. Tad said, I don't want to change. Dad replies, I was once the same size as you. Life changes and we adapt. It is part of growing up. Tad thinks about Dad's words. Later, Tad sees her reflection again. She is surprised. She yells, No wonder I can't swim well anymore. I am losing my tail. What is with these legs too? Tad swims to Mom. Tad asks, What is happening to me, Mom? Mom replies, you are growing up, my dear. You are changing from a young toddpole into an adult frog. Mom helps Dad understand what will happen next. Over time, new shapes and sizes grow. She gets hands, arms, and long back legs. Her face changes shape too. Tad's tail disappears. Tad has a hard time swimming. She often bumps into objects. Tad pokes her new nose out of the water. She realizes she can breathe out of the water. She now has lungs. She walks slowly out of the water. Her legs are wobbly. She sees another frog jump. With practice, she jumps too. Soon, Tad is hopping and hopping all over the land. Tad returns to the water often. Even though she lives on land, she has to keep her skin wet. Tad learns how to swim faster and farther than she could when she was young. Tad uses her tongue to catch bugs. I like the food here better than in the water, said Tad. The water bug can't push me out of the way to get this food. Tad likes being a frog. She likes to hop and briefly fly and glide back to land. She also likes to swim in the water. Tad swims better as a frog than she could as a tadpole. She thinks about her big change adventure. She was once just an egg. She hatched, she ate, and grew a long tail. She changed from a tadpole into a frog. One day, it is time for Tad to become a mom. Tad lays eggs at the water's edge. She hops back onto the land. She looks back and forth between the water and the land. Tad is happy she adapts to live both places. Tad exclaims, I once lived only in water. Now, I adapt to live on land. I am glad for the big change. My children will do the same too. A butterfly friend hears what Tad is saying. I know what you mean, said the butterfly. I was once a caterpillar and walked with many legs. Now I have wings and a long nose. I can fly. I can drink the sweet flower nectar. Tad agrees. As a child, I lived only in small pond. Now, as an adult, I can hop from place to place on land. Tad curiously sees some humans. Tad looks at the babies, children, and adults. Tad knows 
hypothesis that humans grow up and change too. Tad's eggs hatch. She teaches them about life and change. Today, we are alive. Be happy with the size you are. Understand that over time, change happens. We adapt and thrive. Tech forces are the powers of technology that profoundly change our world. What forces enable feet from Earth to walk on the moon? Welcome to Moon Race! Before first space race, telephones looked like this. And televisions. And cars. Computers are very weak and are room size. There are two strong countries, world superpowers. We call them Team A and Team B. Each country team has a big military with many nuke missiles. The teams compete to be the best in space. There is a space race to the moon. Let's look at a few space facts. The night sky is full of stars. Stars look small because they are far away. Stars are very big. Stars are light-giving suns. In one second, light could travel around the world seven times. Light goes from the sun to the earth in eight minutes. Also, gravity is a force that makes small objects fall towards bigger ones. With gravity, planets orbit the sun. Gravity is also why earth apples fall down off trees. Cars and planes are not powerful enough to escape Earth's gravity. Rockets are! The fire pushes down and the rocket goes up. German scientists join both teams. This is Team A's leader. This is Team B's leader. Both teams have new missiles that fly in space. The race to the moon is on! Over half of the first 50 space race rockets fail. Team A launches the first satellite called Sputnik. Team B launches the next satellite. Team A sends dogs into space. Team B sends monkeys. Both teams learn that life can go up into space in a rocket and return. Team A launches the first person into space. He is the first person to orbit the Earth too. He returns safely. He is very famous. He travels. Huge crowds around the world cheer him. Later, a Team B person orbits the Earth too. But, one person rockets are not strong enough to go to the moon. Next, Team A sends two people into space together. Team A walks in space first. Later, Team B also sends two people together into space. Team B is second to walk in space. But, two people rockets are not strong enough to go to the moon. Next, Team A sends three people into space together. Team B also sends three people into space. Let's pause and appreciate that space travel is dangerous. People from both teams die during space race. Team A loses these people and many more. Team B loses this crew while they train in their rocket on the ground. Continuing, both teams need stronger rockets to lift all the equipment into space. Team B builds the huge Saturn V rockets. Stage 1 has 5 big engines. Team A builds N-1 rockets with 30 smaller Stage 1 engines. Before being ready for space, they have to train the people and test the equipment. Team B, Apollo 8, launches three people into space. They fly around but do not land on the moon. They take this famous picture called Earthrise. The Team A N-1 rocket without people inside, 
fails at launch. Both teams continue launching rockets with spaceships. Summer 1969, Team B, Apollo 11, launches into space. In 66 seconds, the 7 million pound rocket goes to the speed of sound. It takes three days for the three people to reach the moon. Next, one person stays inside and flies the spaceship. The two other people fly the lunar module down to the moon. While landing on the moon, they think of all the people who made this moment possible. Team B walks on the moon. Wow! Neil Armstrong said, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Team B stays on the moon for about a day. Team B returns safely to the Earth. Team A keeps improving their rockets. Over the next three years, in a total, Team B lands 12 people on the moon. With no one to chase anymore, Team B stops going to the moon. It cost Team B $24 billion for the moon race. In both countries, a million people work on the space race. Next, Team B makes a sky lab. People go there for a few months. In 1975, both Team A and B meet and shake hands in space. Team A makes space stations. People go there for years. Later, together, people from around the world make International Space Station. Team B rocket fly to ISS. Today, other countries launch their own rockets in spacecraft too. Europe, China, India. Today, the Hubble takes pictures of space. Like giant travel brochures. The awesome pictures show us where we can go in space together. It took 66 years for humans to go. From first airplane flight to landing in the moon in 1969. The first space race still impacts our lives today. We have smartphones and thin televisions and modern cars and trucks. Our amazing computers connect worldwide. Before the next 66 years milestone, may we set the goal. In 2035, for humanity's next moon shoot to take us together peacefully to Mars. We are at the start of Space Race 2.0. our digital devices educate as well as entertain us. Welcome to Too Much Tech, Undo Over Entertained. Technology has many benefits like smartphones and connected computers. Much of technology are tools for us to improve our lives. But tech, unchecked, can become too much entertainment. Ta watches TV, then plays many video games for hours and hours. Next, Ta talks and texts on the smartphone. Suddenly, Ta doesn't feel too good. Ta goes to the doctor. The doctor runs tests. Just as I thought. You have two tainitis. Ta asks, Is it serious? The doctor replies, It can be serious, but with work, it's fixable. Ta asks, What is two tainitis? The doctor replies, Two tainitis is using technology to over entertain but under inform ourselves. Look at the results of your bowel scan. We need balance, tech as entertaining toys, with tech as informing tools. Ta asks excitedly, How do I cure tutainitis? Well, 
It is like this. You know how only eating sweets makes your body weak? Ta answers. Yes. Well, entertainment is like mind candy. Too much tech play makes your mind weak. Ta smiles. I see. I know how to fix that. The next morning, Ta jumps out of bed. Ta eats then rushes to school. Ta thinks about the bath scan. Ta studies hard. Ta plays outside to get some exercise too. After a couple months, Ta goes back to the doctor. Ta takes another bath scan. The results show Ta is balancing tech and time. One day at school, Ta learns something amazing. Video games use math. Ta learns how to program software. Ta helps his friends with their smartphones. While playing video games on the smartphone, Ta has an idea. For my career, I want to design my own video games and software apps. Ta works hard at school. Ta balances time between tech and the real world. Ta does not want to get too tain itis again. Now, to close. May we too balance tech as toys with tech as creative tools. What are the forces of flight? How do airplanes fly with their can-shaped bodies and swept-back wings? Welcome to Science of Airplanes! An airplane weighs the same as 100 elephants. Why do airplanes fly? It is all about four uneven forces. We start on the ground at the airport gate. After people and luggage are on the plane, the door is closed. Next, little cars called tugs push back the planes from the gates. To save weight, planes do not have reverse gears. The engines go faster with the first force. 1. Thrust forward. Inside jet engines, fans squish air. Next, the fuel burns. The exhaust pushes out the back and thrusts the plane forward. Thrust pushes the plane forward faster and faster. Next, two forces push up or pull down against each other. 2. Lift up. Air pushes or lifts the plane up. Here are two ways to think about lift. Faster air flows over the wing and then down. This pushes the plane up. Here is another way to see this. Faster air on top has lower pressure. The higher the pressure below, the more it pushes the plane up. Try this. Hold a piece of paper like this. Blow over the top. See how air pressure pushes or lifts the paper up. As the plane lifts up, it has to overcome gravity. 3. Gravity down. Gravity is larger objects pulling on smaller ones. Earth gravity pulls down on the plane. Gravity is opposite force to lift. There is a point where lift up is stronger than gravity down. It is called wow or wing off wheels. The plane takes off. The plane leaves the ground with lift. Wow! The plane continues to lift up until it cruises. There is a point where lift up and gravity down are even or balanced. The plane stops climbing up and stays at the same level. Engine thrust continues to push the plane forward. During flight, controls change the plane's direction. Rudder moves the plane left or right. Tail elevators move the plane up or down. Ailerons roll the plane from side to side. Pilots combine the three controls to smoothly change the plane's direction. Pilots find their way or navigate the planes with sensors, GPS, and computers. Pilots in airplanes communicate by radios with people in ground stations. This includes asking for permission to land. Hello, can we land? Yes, you are cleared to land. 
How do we bring the plane back to land? With help from our good friend gravity. Slow the engines to reduce thrust. Less air over the wings reduces lift. Gravity is now stronger than lift. Gravity pulls the plane back down to the ground. But we have one more force to talk about. Four, drag back. This force is a bit of a drag. Air in front pushes or slows the plane back a bit. This force is called drag. In flight, engines have to push harder because of drag. Plane shapes are streamlined to reduce drag. When it's ready to land, the engine slows. With less lift, gravity pulls the plane down to the ground. When the plane lands, spoiler flaps increase the drag to help slow the plane too. Next, steering moves the plane left or right on land. Slow moving engines push the plane forward. Brakes stop the plane at the new airport gate. So, our flight story has come full circle. From the land to the sky, and back to land again. To close, may the forces be with us when we fly. Engines thrust forward, wings lift up, gravity pulls down, drag pushes back. Planes fly because of air and four forces. What actions turn piece parts into complete cars? Welcome to the science of cars! Our world is so complex, but the basic science is easy to understand. There are billions of cars and trucks on our world. Let's see the science to make cars in 7 easy steps. Pour or cast very hot liquid metal into a mold. The liquid metal cools into solid shape. This makes the engine. The big holes are for pistons. Other holes are for cooling. The liquid metal has more heat. Just like how water can be ice, liquid, or steam. How hot is the liquid metal? Iron melts at five times the heat to cook pizza. Wheels and cases are cast too. Many plastic parts like this steering wheel are cast also. Next, engine piston holes are polished to just the right size. Pound or forge hot metal into shapes. Hot metal is hammered between these tools to make the crank shaft. The shaft will turn over a thousand times a minute. The secret science is in groups of atoms called grains. For example, wood grows with grains. When liquid metal cools, it has unordered random grains. Forging forces, the grains to all line up in the same direction. It makes pounded parts stronger. This includes piston, rods, and heads. Engine parts are put together or sub-assembled. In the engine, gas burns and pushes the piston down to turn the crankshaft. We need more parts to get the turning to the tires. Gears change to transmit turning. Gears are circles with teeth. Triangle tools cut apart chips to make the gear teeth. This is like scissors cutting paper and a knife peeling an apple. Can openers, pizza cutters, and axes are examples. Triangle shaped tools cut apart pieces of warm metal to make gears. Other gears change the amount of power and speed output from the engine. These gears can change the turning direction from the engine to the perpendicular tires. Before we make the tires, we need to understand pressure. 
Pressure is the amount of force that pushes on something. For tires, layers of rubber and wire are pressed together and heated in a mold to make hollow tires. Cars ride on tires full of air pressure. Brakes stop the car with pressure on brake fluid. In tubes that press on the wheels. Next, our car needs a frame for support and shape. Push warm sheet metal between tools to form frame parts. These huge machines make frame parts that uses pressure, like the weight of over 1,000 elephants. About half of the car's weight is made of press formed parts. This includes the frame, roof, and doors. Next, we need to join the frame pieces together. Spot weld uses heat from electricity to melt small points. The liquid hot spots cool and join the frame parts together. Robots make thousands of spot welds to assemble the frame. Flowing electricity makes heat. This heater, toaster, and light bulb are examples. Doors are spot welded too. Next, we paint the car. First, the car is dipped into the undercoat. This keeps the car from rusting or corroding. Next, the middle coat is sprayed onto the car. This fills in places that are not smooth. Last, the top coat is painted onto the car. This is the color that we see. This is like how static energy saps doorknobs or like lightning flows from the sky to earth. Negative paint flows to the positive frame. This is called electrostatic painting. Next, we need somewhere to sit down. First, weave threads into cloth. Second, cut the colored cloth into pieces. Third, Sew the fabric pieces and stuffing together to make high wear chairs. Last, we put together or assemble all the car parts. This automated assembly tool installs major systems. Robots do heavy lifting and strong assembling. People do delicate work like installing windshields. The windshield is glued in place. Nuts and bolts twisted or torqued to hold parts together. Also, nuts and bolts are great for removable parts like wheels. We feel torque when we twist open a jar. Next, the car is tested to make sure all the systems work properly. Now the car is ready for us to drive. Almost over! Science is in all the steps that make cars. Pour the engine with heat. Pound crankshafts until groups of grains line up. Cut apart gears with triangle tools. Push sheet metal into molds with pressure to form frame parts. Spot weld the frame assembly with thousands of small circles of electric heat. Paint with negatively charged spray onto positively charged parts. Finally, Put the car all together with twisting torque and other ways to assemble. Cars look very complex, but the basic science inside is so easy to understand. Those who know science go farther in life. With science, we eat food for energy. We use math to move our money. We apply actions to make airplanes and autos. We learn to adapt to nature. We understand life's changes. See the catalog for more Alfred books. Printed copies are also available on Amazon. Over 4 million free Alfred ebooks and videos have been downloaded. 
subscribe now.